And good evening to you once again. High School Basketball from the 100th Invitational Winchester Tournament. It's the host squad, the West Central Cougars, 14-4 against the 10-2 Griggsville Perry Tornadoes. Good evening to you. I'm Charlie Hull. John and Jack alongside tonight. It's the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. The final game of the evening, the home Cougars looking to avenge one of their losses on the season to this Griggsville Perry squad who's trying to show, hey, we belong in the top teams in this area. We'll talk more about the matchup on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show after this. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house. Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. When choosing internet and Wi-Fi service to meet your family's education needs, it pays to do your homework. You'll learn that CASCOM, with fast, reliable speeds up to one gig, powered by whole home adaptive Wi-Fi, is the right choice. School has changed, and so should your internet. Contact CASCOM and upgrade to the internet speed and whole home Wi-Fi your family needs. Untangling your headphones, finding the right remote, saying goodbye to your favorite shirt that hasn't fit in 10 years. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who live in your community and answer when you call. So you can worry about more important things, like finding a new favorite shirt. That's simple human sense. Ask Caleb Vandevelli, Pat Vandevelli, or Chris Dorsey with BNP Insurance Agency in Pittsfield, Winchester, or Bluffs if auto owners make sense for you. From our trucks to their lunch trays, to your local hospital, to your favorite pub, and to your kitchen table. For more than 60 years, Dot Foods and Dot Transportation have been stocking the shelves of your hometown. Sure, we've grown a lot. But at our core, we're still small-town, family-run businesses that care about our communities and the people who keep us running. Join the Dot family today and be part of something bigger. the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports. It's the West Central Cougars and the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes this evening from the 100th Winchester Invitational Tournament. 14-4 is West Central. One of those losses, a 55-50 loss to Griggsville Perry at the Nichols Gymnasium back in December. A game that, uh, well, Griggsville Perry saw a big game out of Dane McAllister in that one, and they were able to get the victory over this talented West Central squad. West Central trying to avenge that loss. Griggsville Perry trying to prove, hey, that wasn't a fluke. And, uh, you know, I think the Tornadoes at 10-2 on the season, they feel like they've been a little underestimated this year. And I don't know, Jack, I've watched Griggsville Perry play a couple times on this season. They're not a team to be overlooked by anyone. They play a very intense style of basketball, especially on the defensive side. It starts with the brothers Lipkeman and Lane and Wyatt up top on that defense. And you better be able to take care of the basketball. And on the other side, you better be able to front those two guys because when they can penetrate, they can make a lot of other things happen for this Tornado squad. For this uh, West Central team, Zach Evans, man, he just keeps putting them up on a hurry. He's over 1,000 points in his career. He scored, uh, what, 28, I think, the other day in their win. Uh, he's a very, very good player, but this West Central team is much more than just Zach Evans. Chase, or Chance Little, excuse me, is an explosive player. Jaden Howard is an explosive player underneath, and I like their bench as well. Uh, they give them a little bit of a depth uh, perspective here when you bring some of those guys in. But uh, what I really like about the squad is two guys who play out front for them and just do a lot of little things right, and that's Mason Berry and Tyson Brown, two kids that don't look to score very much but do a bulk of the ball handling and also uh, guard at the top of their defense. I think you're going to have to see Tyson Brown get some points tonight, though. He's going to have to be that other guy that adds maybe eight points in the game. And then, you know, we haven't seen much of Dalton Hutton, and I'm kind of surprised on that. That was a really good player a year ago. 
will he maybe be an integral part of this game? Definitely could be. Of course, the Tornadoes are not an extremely deep squad. Wade Lipcomb kind of uh, playing with a somewhat hampered ankle, so he won't be in the starting lineup. He did play the other night for this team, but they only have 10 guys in uniform any given night. So they don't want to get in foul trouble, especially when it comes to either Lane or Wyatt Lipcomb. And Wyatt Lipcomb uh, put up 31 points the other day. Talk about a kid who's putting them up in a hurry. That's Wyatt Lipcomb having a really, really nice, oh yeah, junior season for Grigsville Perry. They have no seniors on the team. A final timeout on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. We'll have our starting lineups and play-by-play -play next on Central Illinois Sports. Pike County Lumber is the place to start all your building projects. They offer a huge selection of framing and specialized lumber, beautiful interior and exterior doors, and multiple roofing options that can be delivered to your rooftop. Start your indoor projects at Pike County Lumber too. New or renovated bathrooms are one of their specialties. Updating your flooring, time for a new kitchen, any project from start to finish. You can trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Here at Mountain Dew, it's easy to tell who really loves the outdoors. For one thing, there's the rack on your car and the hitch on the back of your truck. There's your garage full of toys, from dirt bikes to wakeboards. And there's your cooler full of Mountain Dew. Always at the ready. Because when it's time to get out there, you know, climb into your deer stand or your fishing boat, a cooler of ice-cold Mountain Dew, that's as important a piece of outdoor gear as your spinning rod or your four-wheeler. Mountain Dew. Get out and do. If your job situation is changing because of layoffs or restructuring, you may have to make several decisions. One important decision may be what to do with your retirement plan. Make sure your retirement stays on track. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, can help. Stop by the office at 1891 Main Street in Quincy, Illinois. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Well, welcome back on the pregame show, the Great Rivers Bank pregame show, and they're going to have a little recognition before the game on these two. And they're going to recognize a gentleman who was a head coach at Barry. Don't give it up too much. Don't give it up too early. It's a surprise. Oh, Bill Jocko. I, I didn't want to give it up because it was a surprise. But Bill Jocko, guy who was the Booster Club president for a long time and integral part of all the things here, a longtime referee coach and a good friend of all of ours, Bill Jocko. What a good guy. Thanks to Bill for all he's done. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you in part by Bowlers Universe. They were open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight, Saturdays 4 to midnight. Now for many menu items from burgers and fries to specialty pizzas, try one of the many craft beers as well at Bowlers Universe in Pittsfield. Let's take a look first at the starting lineup for the visiting team, the Riggsville Perry Tornadoes. Garrett White squad 10 and 2 on the season. They'll start at a guard, a 5'9 junior, Wyatt Lipkeman. At a second guard, a 5'8 junior, Lane Lipkeman. And a third guard for the Tornadoes is the 6'2 junior, Michael Myers. Out of four, a 6'4 senior, check that, junior, Dane McAllister. And at the other four, the 6'1 junior, Eli White. White, McAllister, Myers, Lipkeman, and Lipkeman for Griggsville Perry. West Central and Ryan Seasting, they're 14 and 4 on the season. They'll start at a guard, a 6'1 junior, Mason Berry. At a second guard, a 5'11 senior, Tyson Brown. The third guard is 6'3 junior Zach Evans. Out of four, a 6'2 junior Chance Little. And at the other four, the 6'5 senior Jaden Howard. Howard Little, Evans, Brown, and Barry for 14 and 4 West Central. We step aside here. We tip it off next West Central and Grigsville Perry in a championship bracket quarterfinal from the 100th Winchester Invitational Tournament. Did you know that PCRE Real Estate and Auction now offers a full-service auction alternative? Farmland, residential real estate, commercial real estate, estates, guns, antiques, farm equipment, and commercial equipment are a few examples that the experienced auction team is ready to assist you with. Our team can make the auction experience less stressful and smooth. Check out our next auctions at our new auction location at 500 Piper Lane in Pittsfield or call 217-430-2985 and speak with Jason Duke to learn more. I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. We will pay the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. It is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring. So the peace of mind of that's very nice. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at West Town Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. Okay. 
Well, we get a little change in the starting lineup for the Cougars. Talked about Hutton, Dalton Hutton. He's in the starting lineup. No Barry, Hutton instead. All you have to do is speak it, Jack, and it comes into existence yeah, tonight. Second that? time it's happened. Uh, McAllister jumps in the center circle for Grigsville Perry. They're wearing the road maroon uniforms against Little for West Central. Ed Alexander, our referee, is in the middle. The tip is up and controlled by the Tornadoes. Lipkeman brings the ball to the front court. That's Lane Lipkeman off of the screen. Right side, Myers. Now Wyatt Lipkeman. Tornadoes looking to beat West Central for the second time this year. And as Garrett White said, no love loss between these two programs. Out top of the McAllister had a big game. Now to White, they leave him alone beyond the perimeter. Lane Lipkeman now on the dribble drive. Out to Myers, over it goes to McAllister, to White. Wyatt Lipkeman trying to get free of Hutton. Who's face guarding him? Now here's McAllister left side, three no good. And the rebound pulled down by Tyson Brown. Into the front court come the Cougars as they turn Grigsville Perry away on the first offensive attack of the night for the Tornadoes. I haven't seen Grigsville play much, but is McAllister a guy you want shooting out there? Well, if he's making them, you can put anybody out sure. there, right? 704 to play in the first. He did have a big game the last time these two teams played. Here's Evans from the free throw line. He can't get it to go. Rebound down to Howard, and he's fouled. He'll shoot a pair. Michael Myers will pick up the foul. It'll be his first team first. And ball out of bounds. Oh, no, to the free throw line, Jaden Howard. Howard was a little under the weather yesterday, but must be doing much better today. No score at the first minute and two seconds, and Howard makes the first. Saturday, March 18th, will be the annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. The Remembering Ty Rylander Facebook page will have more information soon. All the proceeds support area youth. Make sure to check it out and get signed up for the event on March 18th. Both good by Howard. Made them both quickly the other way. Come the tornadoes into the front court. Left side, Lane Lipkeman. Here's a ball tipped out of bounds. No, they'll say touched off of Michael Myers last. And a turnover on GP. I just got a notification from one of these little guys' dads who's a longtime official, said if his kid gets out of line, bop him on the head. No, he just said keep him in line. <laughs> 6.43 to play in the opening quarter. Brown into the front court for the Cougars. Just picked up the dribble. Free throw line, Little. Good find underneath Howard. Hangs in the air. Can't get it to go, but he'll shoot two shots. Back to the free throw line goes Jaden Howard. 6.34 left in the first quarter. Foul goes on Eli White. First one by Howard, no good. Really nice ball movement here by West Central on this play. Little, little high, low game with Howard. He just couldn't get that ball to roll through. Second one by Howard is good. 3-0 West Central on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. 6.30 to play in the first. White with it out front for the Tornadoes. On the right side, Lane Lipkeman. West Central limiting the touches of Wyatt Lipkeman on the offensive side. Why wouldn't you put up 30-plus again the other day? Hutton playing because of that, and he's really trying to guard him tough. Myers on the wing. He tries the dribble drive. Nice take to the rim. Michael Myers in for two. First time I've seen Myers play without that bandage on his left arm. Into the front court, Howard. He's running two by White, and White will be called for the push. White's going to pick up his second foul. We may see Wade Lipkeman a little quicker than they were planning. Nope, Flint Kirk first going to come in. He'll sit down Eli White. Kirk's not as big, but he'll play big. He plays hard, very hard. Hutton to inbound, does so to Brown out top. In the middle, Little. Little turnaround, hook shot, no good. And the rebound, Myers with the uh, good box out. Here's Lane Lipkeman to Myers, left side three, bottom of the net for Myers, and the Tornadoes have the lead. 5-3 the score, 5.45 to play in the first. Michael Myers come to play. Howard on the baseline right side. Junior high, he was their biggest scorer all the time. Free throw line with it, Little to Brown, now deep in the corner right side. Back to Little. They'll try to attack, he has a shot put up and gets it a go. Ties it up at five points apiece. This one's going to be close throughout the night. You can almost uh, bet your bottom dollar on that one. Here's Lane Lipkeman to Myers. Wyatt Lipkeman left side against Hutton. He's just a little bit bigger than he is. And probably just as quick, I would say. Lane Lipkeman in the corner. McAllister beyond the perimeter finds Myers. Myers going to attack down low to Kirk. 
Hands it off Wyatt Lipkman. Back to Flint Kirk. As Lipkman took a spill. Out top lane Lipkman. Under five to play in the first period. Flint Kirk has it on the wing. Flint trying to be a facilitator right now, but even if he's not planning on shooting, he needs to give a little bit of a look that he's an offensive threat. Here's Lane Lipkeman for three. It's off the iron, no good. But Michael Myers with the offensive rebound. He'll get it now in the corner for a three, off the window. And Jaden Howard the board for the Cougars. Game tied at five, 428 to play in the first half of this Winchester Invitational Tournament quarterfinal. Evans, deep, three, no good. And the rebound down again to Jaden Howard. Now he has it swatted away, a held ball. It will be West Central basketball on the alternating possession era. Here comes Barry into the game. He'll set Hutton down. You remember Wade Lipkeman in the first game of the tournament? He came in and stuck, what, two or three threes in. He might be the guy you need. He's in right now as sitting down is Flint Kirk. Barry to inbound the ball. He'll get it into Little. Had the ball knocked away and stolen away. Turnover on the Cougars there first. Into the front court. Wyatt Lipkeman on the run out. Goes right at Brown. Shot put up no good. And the rebound pulled down by Howard. Two for Howard. Here's Brown across to Barry. Halfway home in this first period. And a game tied at five points apiece. Brown out front. Free throw line. Howard looks to the wing at Evans. He uh, throws a pretty little pass down low. Little misses the layup. And they'll call a foul here. A little bit of a delayed call, but a foul nonetheless. The fourth already on the Tornadoes. A little go to the free throw line. Wade Lipkeman picked up the foul. His first 14 foul. First one up by Little is good. Breaks the tie. Gives West Central the lead. A second lead change. 3.48 to play in the first. Second one up by Chance is no good. Rebound comes off the other way. That's to McAllister. Dane McAllister with the board. Wyatt Lipkeman across to Lane Lipkeman. Out top, Wade Lipkeman for three, no good. Rebound though to Lane Lipkeman on the offensive side. His put back from the free throw line won't fall. Myers the offensive board. Third chance opportunity here for GP. Can they capitalize? Lipkeman to Wade Lipkeman. Now to Myers for a three off the mark. From behind the arc, and the rebound comes down to Little. Ball now kicked by Wyatt Lipkeman. Stops play for a moment with 3.19 to play in the first. When I saw the twin Lipkemans play against the All-Star team last year in a practice, I didn't see him back down from anybody, and that's even the big boy from Quincy. They were something. 3.15 to play in the first. Barry with it. Coach was emphatic. Coach Seasting. Play, play we talked about, run it. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Wyatt Lipkeman. As a coach, it was a lot easier when it was 5 on 0 in practice and we were walking through that than with these Lipkeman brothers out here. They're pesky little buggers. You forgot to have anybody in the practice that played like that. Three minutes to play in the first. Ball inside to Barry. Barry attacks down low, shot put up no good. Rebound a little on the offensive side. He'll work it over to Evans for a three. It goes begging. Rebound little again. He'll put it back up and in. Chance Little on the offensive board and put back, and it's 8-5 West Central. Chance with five. Here's the ball now stolen away by Evans. Evans, Larson, and the slam at the other end. Evans with the steal. Slams it home. 10-5 West Central on top. 2.37 to play in the first on Central Illinois Sports. Time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams County. Phone 217-593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schutman, Emily Matthews, and Brad Wellman. Illinois FBFM in Camp Point, working for you. Off a turnover, then Little with the Lars, or Evans, the Larceny, and the jam. 10-5, West Central, biggest lead in the ball game right now. Little fella got up that time, didn't he? He can do it. 2.37 to play in the first, 10-5 advantage for West Central as GP took the first time out of this contest. They led 5-2, an 8-0 run by the Cougars. Now Evans guarding Lipkin in Wyatt. And they're going to pester him as much as they can all night. On the right side, Myers to Lane Lipkeman. Wyatt Lipkeman now to Lane. Over to Wade Lipkeman. 
Twins are Lane and Wyatt. Wade's their cousin. They're not triplets. They are not. <laughs> On the right side with it, Lane Lipcomb into McAllister top of the key. He looks to the bench for the plate call. Guarded hard there by Carson Brown, who checked in during the timeout. Michael Myers has all five. Lane Lipkman now picks it up to Wyatt Lipkman. He'll drive the baseline, missed it on the runner, and the rebound down to Carson Brown. Off to Tyson Brown into the front court. Tyson and Carson Brown both out there. Now Carson Brown underneath. He muscles up and puts it in for two. Boundy's brother. Makes it 12-5 the score with 130 to play in this first period. Out top, Lane Lipkman to Myers. Couldn't get free for the three. He'll throw it back out. McAllister. And a ball now underneath and a foul call. The first of the contest against West Central with 121 to play in the first. West Central will be Tyson Brown with the foul. His first team first. <coughs> Hutton in. back in yep. as Tyson Brown sits down. The other way, Wade Lipkman takes a chair. Flint Kirk back into action for Grigsville Perry. Lane Lipkman, McAllister free throw line. Really got a good height on the jump. Shot no good. Working hard there was Flint Kirk. Ball was knocked out of bounds, and the official will say it stays with Grigsville Perry here. It's a good call. I think Hutton was the man to touch it last. Looks like it on the Northwestern Mutual replay as well. 113 to play in the first. Inbounds pass Wyatt Lipkin to Myers in the corner. Three ball, high archer, no good. Rebound chance, little another board. Here come the Cougars up seven with 103 to play in the first. Barry with the basketball to Evans. Back to Barry. Looks down low, Carson Brown. Ball knocked out of bounds. Let's say that was last touched by West Central. Last touched by West Central, says the official. 56.1 seconds to play in the first. And, ooh, I don't know. Sure looked like McAllister got the hand yeah, of the passing did, did lane it? there. 50 seconds to play in the first. Grigsville Perry trying to take advantage of the West Central miscue. Kirk with it out top. To McAllister left side. Four of three. Rims it out. No good. Tornado's not hot from three. And Howard the rebound. Barry runs it across for West Central. Going to attack down low now. Out of control. Somehow maintains the possession. And a foul going to be called here with 32.7 seconds to play in the first. It's Lane Lipkeman. Lane Lipkeman picks up the foul. His first. Team fifth. Yeah, five against the Tornadoes. Just <coughs> one called against West Central, 32.7 seconds to play in the first and a 12-5 Cougar lead. Inbounds comes to Barry near the half court line. Would the Cougars want to be patient here in the uh, final few moments of this first quarter? Carson Brown to Tyson Brown right side. Tyson pulls it all the way back out. Ryan Seasting says, let's try to hold for one shot here. Hands it to Evans with 13. Left different. side, Barry. West Central playing in their own tournament. They play a little different. Evans now had trouble with it and gets called for a double dribble. Yep. Turnover number three of West Central. Got a little discombobulated by the defense that time. And uh, Evans, you can see, just picked it up and kind of lost it off the fingertips. A little relaxed. 6.3 seconds to play in the first. Lane Lipkeman will uh, pick it up for the Tornadoes. Has it with five. Drives, kicks right side. Myers, three, good. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Michael Myers. A big shot for Grigsville Perry. As we head to the second quarter of play, it's West Central 12, Grigsville Perry 8. As you watch high school basketball on Central Illinois Sports. For nearly 40 years, the Niebuhr Funeral Home has been serving our area with professionalism and compassion. This is our business, our hometown. You can be assured we take great personal pride in serving your family in your time of loss. We're locally owned. We're your friends and neighbors. We care about you and your family. Niebuhr Funeral Home, with locations in Pittsville and Barrie, serving our community with compassion and respect. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. 
or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, Grigsville Perry, 3 of 12 as they trail 12 to 8. Michael Myers has all eight points on the other side. West Central, 4 of 11. Grigsville ball. Charlie with a call. Tornado's got that big three from Myers, and now they have a near turnover. Wyatt Lipkman is bumped and fouled by Chance Little, though, and so not going to turn it over to start the period are the Tornadoes. Little with his first, team second. Just an errant pass, and Little got caught in a tough spot. Southeastern uh, win over Unity tonight, 48-43 the final in that contest. Unity gave them all they had, but Danny Stevens with 31 in the win. Here's a three now by Myers, no good. Rebound out of the Tornadoes. Ball was tipped, which slowed down the fast break just a hair. Here's Tyson Brown left side, drives the lane, and gets called for an offensive foul. Brown second, turnover number four, team foul number three. Kind of got bumped, and he said, okay, we're playing with the bump now. And uh, then he kind of extended that left arm. Yep. Ball out of bounds for the Tornadoes length of the court to go. 7.34 left in the first half. It is uh, hot and heavy in here, isn't it? Nice crowd. Here's McAllister, turnaround shot, and a bank is open late. For Dane McAllister. 12-10. Down to a two-point game. Into the front court. With it is Evans. On the left side, Barry. Barry, a baseline drive. Bounces in the paint to Howard. Howard, patient, shot it over the rim. No good. Rebound again, Chance Little. And he's fouled by McAllister. How about, how about the fact that Little just absolutely keeps attacking the rim for those defensive and offensive rebounds? He's really... Uh, had some big moments already tonight. Four boards on the night for Chance Little. 12-10, West Central, 7:04 left in the half, makes the first. Alana Express here to serve you with walk-in medical care when you need it. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Every Monday through Saturday, you'll find Alana Express on the south side of the square in Pittsville. Learn more about their services at alanihospital.org. John might need them. Second one up by Little, no good. Rebound comes off the other way to Meyer. Myers with the rebound, 13-10 advantage West Central. Lane Lipkman with it, out to Myers. Four, po four boards, eight points for Myers. He'll drive in, have a shot blocked there by Howard, and the board down to the Cougars into the front court. Hutton leaves it behind for Barry. Barry, a little shot up, no good. A rebound down to Hutton. He'll put it up, no good, but he's fouled by McAllister. McAllister's got to keep his cool here. You can't lose your head. His second, seven team foul. Two free seven. throws to be shot by Hutton. Dalton Hutton, who I talked about in the pregame. 13 to 10, West Central. Grigsville's in a better place than they might realize right now. Hutton's first is good. Seventh foul on the Tornadoes, just three on West Central so far. Some of that being that the Tornadoes have kind of settled sometimes for that outside shot. They need to work the ball inside. And even, West, and West Central's, drive. And West Central's got it down low. Second by Hutton, the sophomore good. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the difference so far in this one. 15-10 Cougars. Seven's the biggest lead. Here's Wyatt Lipkin with Barry all over him. He drives right by him, gets to the rim, shot up no good on the left-hand runner. But Wyatt Lipkin heads to the free throw line for the first time tonight as he's fouled. He's going to be fouled by Barry. It'll be his first, team foul number four, Wyatt Lipkin. Looking for his first points of the night. He and Lane, neither one with any points yet. Myers has eight. 15-10, West Central, 6.33 left and a half on the Truck scoreboard, first one by Lipscomb good. That's why. Real Mountain Twine, located just north of Pittsfield, across from the airport, your local headquarters for concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, benches, and much, much more. Stop by and see Smiling Rick and Tracy Real at Real Mountain Twine in Pittsfield. Why makes them both, he has two. 15-12 on the tough, uh, truck scoreboard. Hutton in the backcourt, works it across to Barry, down low. Howard goes right at Lipkum and blocked by Wade Lipkum in that time of the board to the Tornadoes. You block me, I'll block you. Lane Lipkum into the front court to Wade Lipkum. Now Myers, right side Wyatt Lipkum. Out top Wade to Lane Lipkum. Says you ever, everybody else go stand on the other side. We're going with the Lipkum trio on this side now. Right side Lane Lipkum against Hutton. Drives inside, denied there. Out to Myers. Wade Lipkum now with it. Pivots. Gets it to Lane Lipkeman. To Wade Lipkeman, three, no good. And the rebound down to Hutton for West Central. 
Evans into the front court with the three in transition. It's off the mark. Offensive rebound, though. Again, this time it's to Barry. Cougars have had a lot of offensive boards. Into Howard, shot fake, hangs in the air, shot no good, but a foul as Eli White will pick up his third. White's third foul, eighth team foul, all good. They're getting the ball down low, and that's what's happening. Now Howard will go to the free throw line. Howard is 2-4-3 for three from there, has three points, make it four now. Yep, you're right. Here comes Flint Kirk back in for the Tornadoes. He sits down. Eli White with those three fouls. They're going to need big minutes out of Wade Lipcomb now, even though he's got a little bit of a bum ankle. Second one by Howard. Also good. He's got four points. Cougars lead by five. 5.30 to play in the half. Myers shot fake. Drives. The high runner no good. Rebound pulled in by Howard. Howard's got six boards already, guys. Two Evans into the front court. Hutton left side, looking down low for Howard. Ball poked away from behind, stolen away by the Tornadoes. Wyatt Lipkman will run it down and bring it up for Grigsville Perry. Five turnovers on the Cougars. Lipkman on the right side. Wyatt now gets it from Lane. Out top, Myers. Myers going to try to attack. Bump, no call there. On the left side, Lane Lipkman three. Good. Lane Lipkaman tickles the twine from 19-9 and cuts it down to a two-point game, 17-15. Lane's first points of the day. Here's the ball now stolen away. It's Wyatt Lipkaman on the run out into the front court. Layup up is no good. Rebound Lane Lipkaman put back up and in. And the game's tied at 17. 17 all on the truck scoreboard. First tie since five. Little Turnover number six. Quick run by Grigsville Perry. Hutton with it. There's a dangerous pass, picked off by Flint Kirk. Lipkaman to Lipkaman. Lane, left hand, up and good again. The Tornado's doing what the Tornado's doing best, turning the other team over and turning those turnovers into points. 4.23 to play in the half. Drinksville Perry leads West Central 19-17. Are you short on time or budget but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos Mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant in Pittsfield. GP with the lead, 19-17, 422 left and a half. Cougars on the attack. Into the front court with it, West Central. Evans, right side three, shoots his team right back into the lead. Here's the guy we've been looking for. It's just what the doctor ordered for the Cougars. They lead 20 to 19. Lane Lipkaman, Wyatt Lipkaman now on the right side. Has the ball knocked loose by Barry, run down by Wyatt Lipkaman in the backcourt. And a technical foul now called on Ryan Seasting. He's called for a technical, and he'll have to sit down now for the rest of the game. 3.59 to play in the half. And That's a big one. He, uh, he and Brian Sorrell did not see something eye-to-eye -eye that time. That'll be two free throws now for Wyatt Lipkeman and the basketball for Grigsville Perry. They trail 20 to 19. Wyatt has two points, 2019 West Central, and the first one no good. Chance to tie it here for the third time tonight. Tied at 5 and 17. That'll be team foul number five, I do believe. Eight on Grigsville Perry. Wyatt Lipkeman, who usually makes these, he makes that one. We're tied at 20. 2020, and the Tornadoes get the basketball. Well, he's out on the floor a lot. And, you know, that, that caught time, that time, yeah. That time they said, nope, you're not going to do that. 2020, just under four minutes to play in the half. Lane Lipkeman to Myers. Back to Lane Lipkeman, behind the back with it. Wade Lipkeman, now Kirk. Back to Wade Lipkeman. Went Kirk right side. Hands it to Myers. Good movement by the Tornadoes. 3.40 to play in the half. Top of the key, Michael Myers. Right side, Wade Lipkeman, three is off the mark. Rebound, though, to whom? It's three. It comes down to Flint Kirk. Kicks it out. Extra pass, Wyatt Lipkeman. Drives, and they're going to call for a travel here. I'll be darned. Third looked, turnover, and uh, I was surprised by that. I thought it'd sure be a foul. Sure looked like he might have been bumped here. As he tried to split two men with the dribble. 
No foul call, just to travel and they play on. Tied at 20, 323 to play in the half. Into the front corner with it is Brown. Brown on the drive. Kicks on the left side, Barry. Baseline, shot no good. Rebound, Michael Myers going to be called over the back. To be his second or third? Second? Second. Team foul number nine. We'll see Carson Brown, the sophomore, to the free throw line. Nine of 13 already for West Central. They've shot a lot of free throws. Three of four is Greensville Perry. Chance Little into the game, and they'll let Jaden Howard take a break. And those two kids have really played well. But a really intense game so far. 3-12 to play in the half, and it's tied at 20 points apiece. And Carson Brown, the sophomore, at the free throw line. First one is up by Carson Good. I like what he's added. He's got three. He'll get the bonus here as Not he breaks the tie and gives the Cougars a lead change here. Not a lead change. They were tied at 20. Second one also good. They led last. They do believe 20 to 19. All right, 22-20. West Central. There's Lane Lipkeman. The Wyatt Lipkeman. Barry trying to stay in front of him. Lane Lipkeman left side. Spin move. Left hand. Lane Lipkeman no good. Rebound down to Flint. Kirk has a poke loose now. And a foul going to be called, I think, on right. Carson Brown. Well, just ball out of bounds. The ball. <clears throat> a lot of contact there on Kirk by Carson Brown. They both were fighting hard for the positioning there. Both sophomores. Yep. And they're billed about the same. 251 to play in the half. 22-20 West Central on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Trucks for all your diesel repair needs. 217-922-0044. Good positioning by Kirk, though, on that rebound, wasn't it? Out front, Lane Lipkeman looks to the bench for the play call. These kids have had this coach and Garrett White all the way through their junior high and now their high school career. Yep. Good continuity. Right side. Myers, three, rattles in and out, no good, but there's Lane Lipkeman as he pokes the offensive rebound out of the air. To Wyatt Lipkeman, drives, kicks, Myers. Lane Lipkeman all the way in the corner. Wade Lipkeman, three, hits off the iron, no good, and Evans with the rebound for the Cougars. Pushes it a long one into the front court, knocked away by a hustling Michael Myers, saved it in bounds, but they'll say no. He was on the baseline. And he good hustle by Myers. He would have hit the wall, but he hit... Uh, he, he hit Jaden Howard's dad, and if you know Greg, he can keep you from hitting the wall. 2.15 to play in the half in a 22-20 contest. Cougars with the lead and the basketball here out in the corner. Tyson Brown will hand it in to Barry. He'll bring it all the way back out front to Evans. Nope, now they're going to go Carson Brown instead. Right side, Tyson Brown. Barry gets it out top with two minutes to play in the first half. Now Carson Brown, Tyson Brown to Barry. Free throw line Little, attacks the rack. Runner up no good, fouled. And he'll shoot two shots. It's either Lipkeman, uh, that's Wade, or White. Wade Lipkeman picks up the foul. It'll be his second, team foul number 10. Shooting foul anyway. 11 of 15 is West Central of their 20, or uh, their 22 points, 11 of them from there. The first one short. Chance looked a little fatigued on that one. Here's Michael Myers in. Eli White sits down. Tornadoes with some foul trouble, though. Yeah, they do have foul trouble. They're not extremely deep. Second one by Chance Little. Up and good. 23-20. Cougars a three-point lead. Tornadoes the basketball. Wade Lipkeman with it to Lane Lipkeman, right side. Guarded there by Tyson Brown. Really good gap control by West Central for the most part tonight. Not allowing the cutter to come through cleanly. Here's Lane Lipkeman now on a drive. Shot up no good. He tipped the rebound. It'll be run down by Little for West Central. Into the front court. Evans, three, left wing, no good. Rebound, Michael Myers grabs it out of the air. To Lane Lipkeman. Back Wyatt Lipkeman. A little brotherly love there by the Twins. And another two for Wyatt Lipkeman. 23-22. 1-14 to play in the half. Here's a steal now by Lane Lipkeman. He'll take it into the front court to Wyatt Lipkeman. Has it behind the arc with 106 to play in the half, and the Tornadoes trailing 23-22 on the truck scoreboard. They'll spread the floor here a bit. Right side with it, Wade Lipkeman deep in the corner. Guarded there by Brown. Tried to throw a pass into a triple team, and it's stolen away. Fourth turnover on Grigsville Perry, eight on West Central. 
Evans into the front court, 47 seconds to play in the half. A lot of contact on Myers that last time. Yeah, he was not a free cutter, but there were three men around him. Probably a little bit of a chancy pass that time, you could call it. Barry to Brown right side. That's Tyson Brown back to Barry. Carson Brown, free throw line fakes. Now has the ball poke and stolen away by Wade Lipkeman. 28 seconds to play in the half. The Tornadoes with a chance to take a lead here in the last 20 seconds plus in this period. Four lead changes in the game, two, three ties. Out front, Lane Lipkeman catches his breath, wipes the soles of his shoes. Has it on the dribble with 10 seconds left. Calls out the play call here with Tate. He's going to go at Tyson Brown here. A little one-on-one. -on -one. Mono -y mono spin move, jump shot, bottom of the net, Lane Lipkeman. Here's a three-quarter court shot. They would not have counted it had it fallen. It hits off of the rim, and we go to the halftime break with Griggsville Perry taking that 24-23 lead. They called Lane Lipkeman's number. He answered the call. Nothing with it at. Tornado's up one at the half. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. At the First National Bank of Beardstown, you come first. We're dedicated to helping you in any way we can with a full line of financial products delivered by caring, experienced professionals. With locations in Beardstown, Murrayville, and Winchester, we're here to serve the region with your banking needs. Contact our Winchester location at 217-742-3134 or visit us online at bankingyoufirst.com. The First National Bank of Beardstown, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Trucks LLC will be located this fall in the new building at 14 East Industrial Park Drive in Pittsfield. Call 217-922-0044. Diesel repair service offering 24-hour roadside repair, mobile service units, semi-truck and trailers, farm and ag equipment, DOT inspections, hydraulic hose repair, anything diesel, we can come to you along the road in the field or at your shop. It's Trucks. Call 217-922-0044. That's 217-922-0044. Two Wheel Trading Company on Facebook. That's your bike dealer. You can find at 110 West Main Street in Mount Sterling, Illinois. Or go to at Two Wheels Trading Company on Instagram. Phone 217-257-0463. Your authorized Marin Bikes dealer. Full service on any brand of bike. They're also offering 25% off accessories and safety gear with any new bike purchase in January. Plus kicking off a buy one get one free on select 2022 models this month. Two Wheels Trading Company, 110 West Main Street, Mount Sterling. Well, halftime, 24-23, Griggsville Perry. And, you know, they're just handing me money. I like the way this works. What happened? Turnovers, four in the game for Griggsville Perry, nine for West Central. It was a 12-8 lead for West Central after one, 24-23, Griggsville Perry at halftime. Two fouls on Tyson Brown, one foul on Mason Berry, and one on Chance Little on the North or the North Green West Central side. I've got three fouls on Eli White, Michael Myers with two, uh, two fouls on Wade Lipkeman, two on Dane McAllister, one on Lane Lipkeman in the first half. 24 23, GP with the win, and we'll tell you more when we come back on the Little Jess Motors halftime show after these. Adney Home Improvement is a family-owned company with Christian values. We have a passion for helping our customers find the best products at a great price. We understand making a large purchase of windows and doors for your home is a big investment. Our mission is to be completely upfront with you. We have built our business on trust and reputation. We depend on our customers to refer us to friends and family for their home improvement needs. Call 573-221-0886. We finish what we start with quality for you. Adney Home Improvement's 100% satisfaction is what we build our business on. 
Express Shirts on You would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Press Shirts on You. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local Press Shirts on You, 506 West Wood, Camp Point, Illinois. Welcome to Douglas Automotive and Tire, your expert trek and car repair center in Pittsfield, Illinois. We provide full service from oil changes to new tires and everything in between. Contact us today to schedule service. We're located at 303 West Jefferson Street in Pittsfield, Illinois. Call 217-922-0064. That's 217-922-0064. Britain and the gang know cars, and if you need repairs, call Douglas Automotive today for all your repairs. What a dandy game. Winner of this one plays Petersburg Porta on Friday night in the semifinals. This quarterfinal game between West Central and Grigsville Perry, 24 23 GP at halftime on the Little Jess Motors halftime show. 34 31 Main Street across from Quincy High School, littlejessmotor.com. All your transportation needs at Little Jess. They'll help you with all the, your needs. They've got Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep. Did I tell you? Jeep and Ram trucks. 9 of 28 is GP, 32.2%. 3 of 14 from the arc, 21.4%. 3 of 4 from the free throw line. Remember that stat. Michael Myers with 8 points. Lane Lipkin with 9 all coming in the second quarter. Wyatt Lipkin with 5. And uh, that is the totals in the first half for them. On the other side, Jaden Howard's got 5 points. 4 points for Carson Brown. 2 for Dalton Hutton. Five points for Zach Evans and seven to lead the way for Chance Little. He also has five boards in the first half. West Central is five of 18 from the field, one of six from the arc, but 12 of 17 from the free throw line. So they have uh, nine more points from the free throw line than Grigsville Perry. Halftime score, 24-23. Can I ask a question yeah. before you go to break? How many more attempts for West Central? 17 to four. 13 more attempts. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Carry on. 24-23, halftime. GP with the lead that they got right before half. We've had four lead changes and three ties. We'll tell you more when we come back on the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. Rewards checking, I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. They have three requirements each month, and if they meet those requirements, we will pay them the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. At this time, it is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring, cell phone protection. We prevent identity theft at a reasonable cost. It's watching out for you. In every 90 days you get an update on it, so the peace of mind of that's very nice. Untangling your headphones, finding the right remote, saying goodbye to your favorite shirt that hasn't fit in 10 years. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Auto owners works with independent agents who live in your community and answer when you call. So you can worry about more important things, like finding a new favorite shirt. That's simple human sense. Ask Caleb Vandevelli, Pat Vandevelli, or Chris Dorsey with BNP Insurance Agency in Pittsfield, Winchester, or Bluffs if auto owners make sense for you. Two-Wheel Trading Company on Facebook. That's your bike dealer. You can find at 110 West Main Street in Mount Sterling, Illinois, or go to at Two Wheels Trading Company on Instagram. Phone 217-257-0463. Your authorized Marin Bikes dealer. Full service on any brand of bike. They're also offering 25% off accessories and safety gear with any new bike purchase in January, plus kicking off a buy one, get one free on select 2022 models this month. Two Wheels Trading Company, 110 West Main Street, Mount Sterling. Hey guys, it's James and Todd coming at you from Jersey's here. Hey, and it is a B E A beautiful day outside. Catch all the action at Jersey's in Cam Point. Fresh, made to order sandwiches, wraps, horseshoes. Check out our brisket bacon burger, our Nashville hot chicken. Fried chicken every Thursday night. Enjoy an afternoon on the patio or catch a game on one of our seven TVs. Queen of Hearts drawing every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Todd, you got some beers for us? Hey, you know what? It's time for that segment. We love beer! Ice cold draft beer, unmatched craft selection, and signature drinks. 
Jersey's Bar and Grill in Cam Point, your hometown sports bar. When I'm driving in my car with my family, I've got two kids and a wife, and four of us are driving in a car, we literally get excited when we see a dot truck. It's actually a sense of pride. Why I would encourage anyone to work a dot. We take care of each other. The company continues to grow and expand. That to me is what brings me to work every day and that, that I enjoy. Diversity, culture, family, all of those things, if you want them, you should be a dot. When you're ready to make your dream kitchen and bathroom a reality, find inspiration at Pike County Lumber in Pittsfield. It starts with a 3D design so you can see every angle and every custom detail. Traditional style or the newest trends will create a design to fit your lifestyle. Your custom kitchen and bathroom will have the features that you need. A large, versatile island for work or entertaining. Quartz countertops. Quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. 24-23, GP with the lead, West Central with the basketball. Here we go. Cougars trailing by a single point here at the uh, first part of this third period. They have Barry, Evans, Howard, Brown, and Little who gets it down low and scores a pretty easy two points. He's got nine. Lead change number five. Well executed play to start the second half by West Central. And it's 25-24 Cougars. Tornadoes have McAllister, Lane, and Wyatt Lipkeman, Myers, and Flint Kirk to start the second half. Myers to Kirk. They leave him alone. He'll hand it off to Wyatt Lipkeman. Out top Lane, Lipkeman for a three in rhythm. It is too hard. And the rebound down to Jaden Howard for West Central. Seven boards for the big boy. Evans into the front court for the Cougars. Over to Barry. Patient with it there is West Central against the Gregsville Perry zone. Now Tyson Brown down low. Howard, and they'll say he travels. Ooh, no, no, no they're going to call foul on McAllister. McAllister had both hands on him as he went to the basket. That's why they called it. Third foul on him, first team foul, second half. Inbounds pass is thrown off of Flint Kirk and nearly stolen away by Michael Myers, but he couldn't corral it. And West Central maintains the possession here. Was Evans trying to bounce it off of him? He did. Get his back to him. Lob pass comes in to Little. He'll try to throw a pass back out now Tyson Brown. Here's Howard on the drive in against McAllister. Shot at McAllister, held his own that time, and gets the block on the board. Into the front court, Wyatt Lipkeman attacks in against Barry. Shot up no good. Rebound down to Howard. His eight. Outlet pass to Barry. Has a three on two. He'll attack. Kick right side, Evans. Puts it on the deck now against Lane Lipkeman. Over to Tyson Brown for a three. It's an air ball, and Michael Myers with the board. He then is... Well, it cost it in the backcourt, and no foul called here. They'll play on. It'll wow. be Griggsville Perry ball out of bounds. Length of the court to go. It was uh, physical there for a moment. Yep, Barry might have got by with one that time. 6.29 to play in the third. Tornadoes down 25-24, but have the basketball. Wyatt Lipkeman on the dribble. Kicks to Kirk. Over to McAllister behind the arc left side. Work it on the baseline. Kirk had to run it down. Back to McAllister now. How long before we see Wade Lip coming back into this game? He's just a lot more of an offensive threat at this point than Flint Kirk is. Lane Lipkeman to Myers. Quick launch three. It's short. And on the rebound, Barry gets the board for the Cougars. Gets it to Evans on the run out the other way. Loses his footing, but they'll say that's because he was fouled by Kirk. And it'll be ball out of bounds for West Central. Kirk will pick up the foul. It'll be his first. Team foul number two. Cougars ball underneath. Barry to inbound for West Central. Looking, lobs out. And all the way into the backcourt for Evans to chase down here. He's a cool customer. Yeah, he said, I don't want to catch that on this side of the line anyway. And now, a blocking foul by Wyatt Lipkeman. Oh, I thought, I, no, they called it on Wyatt Lipkeman. I thought the, it was going to be on Kirk, but 
John and I both did that. John's just that voice in my head. Wyatt Lipcomb called for the foul. His first team third already against the Tornadoes. 5.42 to play in this third period. Evans out top Brown over to Barry. Free throw line, Howard attacks the middle. Shot up blocked by McAllister and the rebound to Myers. Long pass into the front court. Wyatt Lipcomb to Myers. He's full speed ahead to the rim. Missed the runner and the rebound down to Howard again. Nine for him. Seven for Myers. Into the front court. Little gets it. Puts up a shot. Never had possession. And it's loose underneath. Bodies all over the floor. That's got to be a foul on Barry. That is a foul on Barry diving over the top here is what we'll have. He's gotten by with about three fouls. And he should have probably had a couple on that trip. And he'll finally get one. Yeah, I understand you, you're diving in for the scrum here. But Barry's going to come over the top of the man here. And that's why he gets called for the foul. His first. 5-13 to play in the third. They're leaving a lot of blood and sweat and effort on the court on both sides here in a 25-24 contest. One bucket in the second half in the first three minutes. Well, I didn't say it was a highly uh, entertaining offensive contest. Here's Flint Kirk, a little slip, fakes, puts it up, and in. Flint Kirk with the basket. His teammate made him shoot that one. Makes it 26-25. He can do it. He's just got to have the confidence yeah. to let it go. Six. He was a big scorer in junior high, but he was a big guy back then. Here's a ball now tipped by Kirk. Ball saved in by Myers and stolen away by the Tornadoes. Ooh, nearly over and back there. Tenth turnover. Out top McAllister, and he travels. Yep, he sure did. And now McAllister. And McAllister and is Howard. going to have to relax here. He's going to have a problem. McAllister's going to sit down. Good coaching by Garrett White as Wade Lipkeman comes back in. He and Howard kind of gave each other the old stink eye that time. Well, the old bro the brothers had a little problem a few years ago. At least one of them had a 435 problem. 4.35 to play in the third. 26-25, the advantage for Riggsville Perry. Perry into the front court. He is pestered there. He now has picked it up. but he, He's like, I do not want to throw the ball the way of Wyatt Lipkin. I know what's going to happen. And you know what? He was right. Perry's kind of frustrated right now. Yeah, he's going to play the point now on the inbounds play for the Cougars to Tyson Brown right side. He now lost the ball, runs it down in the corner, gets it to Howard, attacks down low, runner up off the window, no good, and the rebound down to Flint Kirk, and the rebound by Chance Little. Well, the foul's going to go on Little. That's his second, third team foul. No. Good that job time. by Kirk. He got the rebound and then chinned it. Yep. The only thing uh, Little could do at that point was foul him if he was going to reach if for Jayden the ball. If Jaden Howard was going to get a foul called on Griggsville, it was going to happen out on the elbow. And when it didn't happen until down low, he didn't gab the foul to look for it. Well, they kind of let him go. Yep. Here's a spin inside lane. Lipcomen finds Wade Lipcomen. Good luck three, and he knocks it down. Wade Lipcomen with the trip. 29-25 Griggsville Perry, their largest lead of the contest on the Trex LLC scoreboard. Carson Brown to Tyson Brown. In the corner, Evans for the three and the answer, and it's good. Guess who? Zach Evans at the other end. Says, I'll take three. Cuts it down to a one-point game again. 3.30 to play in the third. A dandy matchup here. Left side with it, Wyatt Lipkeman. He'll try the dribble drive, and it's fouled by Barry. Barry throws his hands up. His third, team fourth. A lot of, lot of bottom of the uh, palms going up in the air in this one, guys. 29-28, correct? 29-28, correct. Briggs will parry the lead and the basketball. Barry stays out there, even though he's got those three fouls. Huh. Here's a back cut. Wyatt Lipkeman shot up is good. He fearlessly goes into the rim for another two. 31-28, Tornadoes on top. Very lucky he didn't pick up his fourth right there. Here's Carson Brown. Going to attack down low. The sophomore, I like that aggressiveness. And he'll shoot two yeah, shots. Yeah, Wade Lipkeman went down holding his ankle or his knee. Or Wyatt, I mean. Foul is on Wade Lipkeman, his third. Yeah, Wyatt held that knee. I hope he's okay. Barry to the, or Barry, Brown, Carson Brown to the free throw line. He has got uh, four points. First one up is good. Saturday, March 18th, will be the annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. Remembering Ty Rylander Facebook page, we'll have more information soon. Proceeds have benefited many of the youth in the area. 
And you can support the event on March 18th. Again, follow the Remembering Ty Rylander Facebook page. Second one also good. 31-30. Brown's got six. Three minutes to play in the third. Eli White in the game now. He, the Lipcomb and Twins, Flint Kirk and Michael Myers, the guys out there right now. Myers, dribble drive to White. So White and Kirk not going to be much of a threat from the three-point line here. White hands it off to Lane Lipcomb. To Wyatt Lipcomb. The guy's not very big. 5'9 and 5'8 is what they list them at. But Meyer, they're fun to watch. Out top, Myers over to Lane Lipcomb off of the Myers screen. Many years ago, the Pete Fish Twins. Kind of reminds you of that, At AC it? Central, and then, of course, you had the Arcelone Twins, much taller, but... Yeah, that's not fair. These twins are something to watch. Here's Myers left side, drives the lane, kicks right side, Eli White. I thought maybe Myers go to the basket that time. To Wyatt Lipkeman, he's using the double screen, a little hesitation. Fakes got the man off of his feet. Lane Lipkeman for a three, no good. And Chance Little, another board. Give him six boards on the night. A chance for the Cougars to retake the advantage. One minute, 57 seconds to play in the third. Evans drives, finds Brown down low. What can Brown do for you? Well, give you a lead. 32-31, Cougars on top. And a good find by Zach Evans. He's got eight. The sophomore off the bench. Lane Lipcomb, a little hesitation move. Down to Kirk in the corner. Myers three goes Baggy. Little another rebound. Seven for him. Evans walks it across. His squad up by a point. 127 to play in the third. Down low. Brown. Reverse layup. Missed it this time. Myers the rebound for GP. How about eight boards for Myers? Here come the tornadoes into the front court. Out top, Flint Kirk to Lipkeman. That's Lane Lipkeman on the bounce with 112 left in this third period. His squad trailing by a single point. They led by a single point at the halftime break. He said, if I can make the last shot at the buzzer on each quarter, including the last one, we'll win. A minute to play in the third in this quarterfinal matchup. Out near the half-court line, Lane Lipkeman gets it to Myers. Skips it all the way across Wyatt Lipkeman to Lane. He'll work a pass now to Wyatt Lipkeman. 43 seconds to play in the third. Barry out there playing with three fouls. Yeah, he's got to be careful. Flint Kirk now with it to Wyatt Lipkeman and to Lane as they play a little keep away. Here's where your shot clock people start screaming. 30 seconds to play in the third. Wyatt Lipkeman. Back out Lane Lipkeman gets a touch. Barry almost picked up that foul right then. I agree. 22 seconds. Flint Kirk to Wyatt Lipkeman. Lane Lipkeman. 18 ticks to play. Kept it for a minute. GP also gets the ball to start the fourth quarter. So trying to beat a buzzer here. And start the fourth quarter with the lead and the ball. Nine seconds. Bounce pass right side, nearly stolen away. Wyatt Lipkum in, Lane Lipkum in three. Man goes flying. Lane Lipkum in for a three, no good. And we head to the fourth quarter with West Central leading Grigsville Perry 32 31. A one point game in the 100th Winchester Invitational Tournament fourth quarter play by play. Your way next on Central Illinois Sports. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Bank of Bluffs and the Meridosha Community Bank with two locations to serve you in Bluffs and Meridosha. My wife and I have a long history with the Bank of Bluffs and its friendly staff. When we have needed a friend in the banking world, the Bank of Bluffs has always been in the right place for us. The Bank of Bluffs, the small town bank with a big heart for customers. Plus, you are dealing with your friends and neighbors every day. Why be a number when the Bank of Bluffs will treat you with respect and as a friend? The Bank of Bluffs and the Meridosha Community Bank, member FDIC. 32-31 West Central with the lead over GP. 8 of 27 is uh, West Central. On the other side, Eleven of, or 12 of 38 for Grigsville Perry. Grigsville Perry basketball. What did you say the Tornadoes were? 4 of 20 from 3? 4 of 20 from 3. And they trail by 1. Here's McAllister out top. He, he might have been fouled, no call. Gets it on the right side. Lane Lipkeman. 
Has it out top. Lane and Wyatt Lipkeman out there along with Kirk, McAllister, and Myers. They'll hand it off. Wyatt Lipkeman tiptoes along the baseline to McAllister for the three, and he gives him the lead. Five for him. McAllister with the triple. 34-32 Tornadoes. Here come the Cougars trying to answer. Eight lead changes. Tyson Brown, Hutton, Howard, Evans, and Little to start the second half. That's the way they started the game tonight. Evans, three, answers short. Rebound, though, down to Little, and he's fouled by McAllister. He said, I didn't even know he was going to be there. How could I have fouled him? And he did. His fourth, team fourth. Barry going to check back in. Wade Lipkeman coming in. Ball to bounce to the uh, Cougars here. Barry in, Hutton down. On the other side, you talked about McAllister taking the chair. With those four fouls, 7-12 left. Inbounds pass, and they'll call traveling on Tyson Brown. Brown jumped to pull the ball and came down because there was no place to throw it. 11th turnover, second of the second half. This little hop let the shoe tops off the ground a hair there. Yeah. 34-32, Griggsville Perry with seven minutes to play in this contest. How about that shot by Wade Lipkerman moments ago. Oh, McAllister's three. Here's a drive in by Lane Lipkerman. It's in for another two. 11 for him. Tornadoes lead by four, tying their largest lead of the contest on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Little in the backcourt gets it to Brown, Tyson it's Brown. Pretty much the same tempo as the last one. To Howard, ball knocked loose underneath, tied up. It'll be a timeout first for West Central. West Central is going to be granted a timeout before the tie up here. A 30 second break, 636 left, 36 32. Briggsville Perry with the lead. This is the way it's supposed to be in the 100th anniversary of the Winchester Invitational Tournament. The host school, West Central, and Griggsville Perry, a team that's been in this between Griggsville and Perry a lot of years. 36-32 GP, West Central with the basketball after the timeout. Got the timeout to save a jump ball, and they, uh, they would have the arrow should there be a jump ball, so they save that a little extra change of possession here. Here's a shot put up off balance, little no good. Wade Lipkeman had the rebound, got knocked down, no call, and the ball out front to West Central. Here's a drive now by Brown, and he'll be fouled. Brown fouled on the play by one of the GP players. Howard went flying, got a rebound. The foul will go against Wade Lipkeman. That'll be his fourth, will it not? Fifteen foul. Free throws for Brown. Must have been shoot. This is their 20th and 21st free throw, and the first one short by... Brown. He has no points on the night. Jaden Howard hitting to the other end. Second one up is good. Tyson Brown makes one of two. Makes it a three-point game. 36-33. Griggsville Perry a three-point lead in the basketball. 6-18 left. Lane Lipkman. Long pass Wade Lipkman. Myers three. Good. Michael Myers. He doesn't think about it much. He's got 11. He'll sneak up on you when you're least expecting. Makes it 39-33. Tornadoes tie their biggest lead again. Here's Evans on a pull-up three in transition. No good. Rebound down to Tyson Brown. Goes inside. Ball knocked loose. Run down by Little. Hands it to Barry. Out top Evans. He's a hip check. No call. Tries to throw. Woo! A little reach around pass to Little. It won't fall, but he's fouled and he'll shoot two shots. The 22nd and 23rd free throws to be shot. Kirk will pick up the foul, his second. Team Watch foul it. number seven. Watch this pass. Ooh, a little extra spin on that one from Evans. Little had nine, still does after he misses the first. Free throws are so important right now. Moose Lodge 420, check them out each Friday for their uh, new specials. The food's hot, the drinks are cold at Moose Lodge 420 on Washington Street in Pittsburgh. Chance makes the second, he's in double figures with ten. Five-point game, 39-34 the score with five... 40 left. Griggsville Perry trying to pull an upset here. We've seen two in the tournament so far. 
The Lipcomb boys are thinking about what they need to do each time down the court. They don't get rattled much, do they? No. I'll tell you, like I said, when they practice against the All-Star team, and these guys were good. He's close to five. He's still counting. Now yeah. he called the uh, wow. – he got three. Here's Wyatt Lipcomb and Barry trying to stay in front of him. At McComb, that had been a five count. Barry reaching up to his nose like he's got blood. Trying to wipe it away. Here's Lane Lipkman on the dribble. 5.05 left against Brown. Now the count just starts. Out near the half court line goes Lane Lipkman. Good at defense by Tyson Brown. Now the count starts again. Two, three, four, five. And a timeout right at the nick of right at the nick of time. I mean right at the nick of time. Right by uh, Garrett White. He says, I can count to five two, and that was five. 450 left, 39, 34. Tornadoes on top. State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer wants to wish all of the teams the best of luck in this year's Winchester Invitational Tournament. C.D. Davidsmeyer would also like to take the opportunity to congratulate the Winchester and West Central Cougars communities on 100 years of providing the best tournament experience. Thank you to all who continue to make this event a success. That message from State Representative C.D. Davidsmeyer. 39-34, the lead for GP over WC West Central. 450 left in regulation. And who says we have to only play 32 minutes? Who knows? What a timeout by Garrett White, though. I'm here for the duration. Just in time. Ball in the hands of Lane Lipkman. 4.45 left. Tornadoes lead by five. To Myers. Ooh, oh, elbow to the face of Evans. Now Evans kind of wipes across him. How about tomorrow night? Camp Point Central and Route. Here's Lane Lipkeman, has picked it up to Myers near the sideline. I mean, Barry has got a hold of his jersey. Gets fouled now, and uh, he'll be called. Didn't call technical on that, did they? Well, it was a continuation play. I guess it's only if you dunk it. Evans, foul, his first. 15 foul. <laughs> I the, mean, Barry's got a hold of the man's Yeah, head. by the letter of the law, I'd say what Barry's doing is a foul. That's just what I think. Yeah. I mean, he puts both hands on him quite a bit. White Lipkman now trying to dribble by him. Breaks the five count, and now the call, a blocking foul on Barry. Yeah, Barry's going to pick up the foul. That'll be his fourth. Team foul number six. I only have five fouls, Jeff. You wanna Team fouls? That? Yep. Uh, well, they just had five up there, and they should change it to six now. Barry trying to see if. They can maybe buy that offensive foul, but he won't. And his fourth foul, he stays on the court. He had five fouls in that trip down the court if they'd have called all of them. Are you uh, surprised you stand on the court with 4.16 left? Yeah, I guess Hutton's valuable if he needs to come in. Oh, definitely. I'm surprised they were comfortable to start the day with him that he wouldn't be in right now. Lane Lipkeman to Myers. Tornado's kind of just playing a little keep away here. Now Myers bounces it off of his own foot. Evans knocks it away from behind. There's Flint Kirk. To Myers, drives in, kicks it back out to Wyatt Lipkeman. Tornado's playing a little four-corner keep away right they're now. They're not looking to score, but they're up by five. Well, I don't know if they're not looking to score. They're just looking to really spread the floor, and they think that's where they get an advantage. Barry's going to get his fifth. Fouls out. There's his fifth. 16 foul. Gets him on the hand check here. And gets called for his fifth with 3.48 left. And Seasting will. Uh, Here comes Tyson, Hutton into the game. Tyson Brown said, Coach, we need a fifth. Here's Hutton back in now. He's Lipkeman's man there. Uh, Coach Seasting on the bench. Of course, he got a technical in the first half, so he cannot stand up. But the Lipkeman twins are a headache. I don't care what you say. On both ends, they're, I mean, they're, the quickness, the toughness of them, they're tough. They're paying the butt for Aaron. What are you talking about? Here's Wyatt Lipkeman with Hutton on him. Now that's picked up the dribble, hands it to Lane Lipkeman. Double team comes his way. Ball out of it, but a timeout. Timeout granted first for Garrett White. And look out. You might want to settle down if you're the West Central coaching staff. You don't want to get another technical. 3.35 left. We'll all take a moment to breathe in this timeout. 39-34. The advantage for Great Grigsville, Perry. 
Pike County Glass has been serving the local communities with high-quality glass service at affordable pricing for many years. We're now located at 1351 West Washington Street in Pittsfield, next to Farm and Home Supply. We offer all glass services, including commercial installation, auto glass repair and replacement, and glass shower and closure installation. Call Pike County Glass, 217-285-4275. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at Westtown Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at Westtown Ford in Jacksonville. 3.35, left in regulation, 39.35 GP, and they've had the ball for quite a while. About a minute and 32 seconds on this end of the court. And the inbounds pass, it comes into Wyatt Lipcomb in the backcourt against Hutton. Next next foul would uh, put uh, the Tornadoes to the free throw line at the one and one. Here's Lipcomb in and he is tripped up and foul. I think this will be on Little, but let's wait and see what the official. Hutton Little Brown, who's it gonna be? Hutton. Uh, I thought he called on 20, he called on Hutton. That's his third or first. 17 foul free throws for Wyatt Lipcomb. Three of four is West Cent or uh, Grigsville Perry. 16 to 23 for West Central. First one is up, no good. A rare miss for the Tornadoes. He is three of five on the night. 323 left in a five point game. Still a lot of time left in this one. Evans out front. If you're West Central, you don't have to rush or try to force a three here. Here's Evans, jump stop, floater up, good. 10 for him now, but when you had to play defense that long, that's a little different. And now a foul called. On that. In the backcourt here. But one and one still. Three of five is West Central on the night. White Lipkin's the only one shot at first one. First one's up and good. 40 to 36. Eight for White Lipkin. Wade Lipkin sits down. McAllister back in the game. McAllister's been very quiet. He made that one three. Second one up, also good. He's got nine. 41-36 the score with 3.07 to play. In the backcourt, Tyson Brown works it across. Evans, three ball. Foul. And he'll shoot not one. He'll shoot not two. He will shoot three as Flint Kirk went flying by and hit him on the arm. Four fouls on Kirk. Eight team foul on each team. And Evans, uh, three important free throws yeah, here. 16 of 23 on the night. First one's up. Cool as a cucumber. Makes it. He's got 11. Tim Waters and Waters Concrete. They offer quality concrete for your new builds, driveways, sidewalks, decorative patios, anything with concrete. Waters Concrete. Bang. Second one good. 309-252-1052. I didn't want to make it one of those Ann Castellanos with a home run here type of moment, <laughs> so I just wanted to give you a, a second there. Third. Good. 41-39. If you know, you know. Three minutes left if in a two-point game. If you know Zach Evans, you know. Inbounds pass. Wyatt Lipkeman. They uh, yeah, might have to equip him with a saddle if they're going to ride him down the court like that. Riker and Ford picks up the foul, his first 19 foul. You're going to keep fouling foul Wyatt Lipkeman. It probably won't work out well. Five of seven now. Still one and one, though, you said. Yep. 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 Wyatt Lipkeman with nine points in the night. Two, four, five in the free throw line. First one good. He's got Ted. And I think that's what makes this uh, these Lipcomb and Twins so frustrating, too. Then they go to the free throw line. They have no emotion on their face, by the way, and they just keep doing what they do. Lane has 11, 10 for Wyatt. Make it 11 for each one. And 11 for Myers. Three guys with 11. 43-39. Ball stolen away now by Wyatt Lipcomb in the backcourt. Third over number... 13. Gets it to Lane Lipkeman. 2.44 left on a 43-39 Grigsville Perry lead. Wyatt Lipkeman to Lane Lipkeman. Left side McAllister. <laughs> Gets it to Lane Lipkeman. To Wyatt Lipkeman. He'll drive inside. Kicks it to McAllister. 2.30 left. GP plays a little keep away. Says, hey, come and get it, will you, there, big boy. Here's Kirk, and he'll be fouled. And he'll shoot two shots now as Howard, it's the 10th team foul by West Central. Howard will pick up the foul his first. So uh, 10 and 11. 
And Kirk to the free throw line. That's the guy they probably wanted to try to foul. He's got two, but you know, this guy was a stud little player in junior high. 43-39, first one is no good. One of the things, not just because he missed it, but one of the things he was really good at in junior high was making free throws. Yep. He's got to relax. Another. He's got to relax and put it in here if you're Flint Kirk. Seven of ten so far for what or for Grigsville Perry. Second one by Kirk is no good. Rebound Evans. Here come the Cougars. Down by four with 2.20 left. Into the front court, Howard. Right side, Brown. Three. Bang! It goes. And a timeout will be called by West Central. 43 42. What can Brown do for you? How about cut it to a one point game? 214 left on Central Illinois Sports. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fmbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDIC. Forty-three, forty-two. Griggsville Perry with the lead. Two fourteen left. Griggsville Perry basketball after the timeout. The three by Carson Brown was his first bucket of the night after making one of two free throws. He has four points. He shot that from the corner like he was supposed to shoot it. Double bonus, what? Oh, okay, well that's good hand signals, I like it. I got a few, I got a few you hand a few signals others? for you. Here's McAllister in the backcourt. West Central fans thought he might have traveled if you couldn't hear him. Here's a. Pass now to Wyatt Lipkman. Bounce pass down low. McAllister, turnaround shot up and in for two. McAllister with the bucket. He'll get the and one. And the foul's going to go against Howard. That'll be his second double, or the, the and one, I should say. 45-42. He can make it a two-possession game with this free throw. Two of one left. McAllister with seven points on the night. Up. And good. Nice job by McAllister. 46-42, four-point game. That was big. In the backcourt ball, tip, stolen away. McAllister kept it alive to Lipkaman, who puts it up and in for two. Is that Wyatt? That's Wyatt Lipkaman. I called it McAllister. It was Lane Lipkaman that got the tip. Not McAllister. They are not related. Into the front court with it. Here comes Howard, attacks the rack, got the man off of his feet, up and in for two. Another two there as McAllister had to give it up with the four fouls. 48-44, 1.30 left. Here's Lipkeman into the front court, McAllister. If you're Griggsville Perry, you have to know the pressure's coming here, and it might be rough. Here's Wyatt Lipkeman, ball stolen away by Ford. Gets it to Evans, leading the charge into the front court. Layup up is good by Zach Evans, and it's a two-point game. 48-46, 1.12 to play. John, you might have to pump it up here. McAllister. He'll work it over to Wyatt Lipkeman. Back to McAllister. 1-0-2 remaining. Ball knocked loose. Ball, a foul. A foul call with a minute to play. And the natives are restless. Some Evans. say, some say might have gone over the deep end. Evans picks up the foul. Double bonus situation. 48-46. Put Myers to the free throw line. Hadn't been there yet. Has 11. First one up and good. He'll get another. Give him 12, 49-46. He can make it a two-possession game again. Second one up by Myers. He misses it, and the rebound comes away to Evans. Evans with a basketball under a minute to play in regulation. Zach Evans, the 1,000-point-plus scorer already as a junior, works the dribble out front against the brothers Lipkeman. Drives in, shot blocked by McAllister, and McAllister gets the board. A big block there, and then a foul called. On Evans, it looks like here. Evans got his shot blocked by McAllister, his second block of the night. McAllister's rebound was just his third. Now he'll go to the free throw line, 9 of 15 for Grigsville Perry. Not great, 49-46. These two free throws can make it a five-point game, 45 seconds left. Dane McAllister's first is good. Hits he's, the front of the rim and crawled on in. He's got nine. 
50, 46. This is kind of the way the last one rolled, was it not? 55, 50 was the final on that one. Second one up is short. Four point game. Rebound down to Howard with 43 seconds left. Gets it to Brown. Griggsville Perry made their free throws. This could have been over right now. Brown on the right side with 37 ticks. Hands the ball off to Evans. Ball was tipped into the backcourt. And now a timeout called by West Central. We will pause as well. 32.6 seconds left in the ballgame. 50-46, the advantage for Griggsville Perry. Back with you after this. Seed selection is one of the important decisions required to achieve yield goals. Logan AgriService represents top seed lines in the industry like Lewis Hybrids, Stein Seed, and AgriGold, and focuses on products developed to meet or exceed our customers' expectations. Sit down with one of our experienced local seed experts who will work with you to help select top-producing corn hybrids and soybean varieties tailored for your specific soils and fertility levels. Or visit us online at loganag.com. Logan AgriService, serving agriculture since 1962. 32.6 32.6 seconds left, 50-46 in favor of Griggsville Perry. West Central with the basketball in front of the scores bench, right in front of Aaron Lipkeman. If we needed another Lipkeman, there's Aaron. Ball in the backcourt to the Cougars, down by four. Ball comes to Evans, puts a double team, pulls up for a three, no good. Rebound over the back, Michael Myers. You and bet. to the free throw lines, Jaden Howard to shoot two. Michael Myers picks up his third. I just had that as the ninth foul. Oh, excuse me. You're right. One and one. I was looking at the wrong number. 19 of 26 for the night for West Central. Here's Wade Lippman for 10, the first time in a while. Yeah, 10 of 17 for Griggsville Perry. Jaden Howard to the free throw line. He's got seven. He's three for four from there. The one and one. First one is up and good. Big to make the first. He's got eight. Bigger. 50. 47. Bigger to make the second. Second one. Ah, oh, no good. And on the rebound, Chance Little is going to be called for the foul. Yep, Chance Little will pick up the foul. It'll be his third double bonus. We'll go to the other end. He was up and under McAllister there. Some people say he was boxing out, but McAllister was in the air and he was still pushing him backwards. That's McAllister, going to be a foul. two for three on the night, has nine points, 50-47. And it's about time for everybody to settle down a little bit. R-E-L-A-X. Yeah. Take a Xanax. We'll charge him. McAllister's first is up and no good. It looked hard out of his hand, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. You make it a two-possession game with 27.2 seconds left. Eli White is back in defensively. McAllister needs this one to make it a two-possession game. Well, you know, if he does it, three-pointer will tie it. And now a foul on the rebound as White Lipkin yeah. moved up just underneath enough of the man, just like they saw on the other end. And shockingly, the same folks that were complaining about the foul a moment ago have nothing to say about this one. Double bonus situation. Chance Little goes to the free throw line. Wyatt Lipkin picks up his second. Ten fouls on each team. 50-47. He can make it a one-point game with these. 26.2. First one by Little is no good. Looks hard out of the hand again. Here's he has, Wade Lipkeman uh, in. Missed he, four out of eight. Eli White comes down, and he cut it down to a two-point game. This is big. The way it's going back and forth, the way free throws are going to be caught, you want to score if you're West Central. Second one is no good. Rebound McAllister. Threw a pass. Stolen away by Evans. Down low Brown. Brown shot up good. It's a one-point game. 50-49, 17 seconds left. Wyatt Lipkeman to Myers in the backcourt. He'll work it across. To Wade Lipkeman, he's checked into the boards. No, they say he stepped out of bounds. They say he stepped out of bounds. No foul called on this play as Wade Lipkeman looked to have the man push him out of bounds, but they say he had his toe on the line there. White, White coming in, Lipkeman down. West Central calls a timeout, a full timeout. 50-49, 11.7 seconds left. And this, I mean, is a big play on the Northwestern Mutual replay as Wade Lipkeman, it sure looks like, had Howard run into him that kind of forced him out of bounds on that far sideline. It's a long way away, and I'm not questioning the official on that. I'm just saying that could have been a foul. Could uh, could have been called a foul. It wasn't, but it could have been called a foul. Called the timeout, did West Central. They are now out of timeouts. That also big in this contest. Yep. But... West Central with a chance to take the lead here because of some missed free throws. 
10 of 17 for Griggsville Perry, 20 of 29 for West Central. Not bad, but not great. GP, really not great because if you go 10 of 17, that's about 60%, right? Biggest thing for West Central to do first is get the ball in bounds. They're out of timeouts. 50 49. Griggsville Perry clinging to a one point lead. And Wade and Wyatt Lipkeman, or Lane and Wyatt Lipkeman, are looking for a steal, so you got to be careful. Looks like they'll let them get the ball in here. As Evans will have it in the backcourt with 10. Brings it across the half court line with 8. Tries the little crossover. Right side, wing, brown three, blocked. Rebound loose underneath, and out of bounds is the West Central man with 2.1 seconds left. Out of bounds. Yep. Well, Rick's Brown's looking. shot was blocked. Yep, it was blocked from the corner, I think, by McAllister. Timeout now, Griggsville Perry. We'll stay right with you here. A full timeout in a 50-49 ball game. If you are West Central, you foul immediately here. Yeah, you if got you can't to. get a steal on the inbounds play. You Two. might even you might even foul before the ball comes in if you can get it. 2.1 seconds left. Griggsville Perry trying to pull the upset. They make both free throws. Even though it's only 2.1 seconds, a three would tie it even if they make them both. Short roof here at the Winchester Elementary School Gymnasium. Not so as short as it used to be. If you're, Well, I mean, the roof's the same. The flag used to hang in the middle. Well, and the lights used to sing, hang down a lot farther. I'd say these lights hang down maybe farther than the old ones oh, with no. the chains. Oh, no. Ooh, I they were know. much bigger and, and were much lower. They were probably like four foot off the floor. Don't you remember? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. GP is down to one timeout. 2.1 seconds left. Tornadoes ball length of the court to go. They cannot run the baseline. Myers will be the man to throw it in here for the Tornadoes. You do not want it to get into the hands of Wyatt Lipkeman if you can keep from it. Doesn't it look like he could break deep right here? Myers to throw it in. Looking, looking. He'll get it to Wyatt Lipkeman. Lipkeman fouled by Ford with 1.3 seconds left. He'll shoot two. And could still just make it a one-possession game. Now, Wyatt Lipkeman missed his last one. He has missed – oh, no, he made his last two. He's missed two out of seven, five out of seven from the free throw line, 50-49. He can still make it a three-point game. First one's up. Cool as a cucumber. He has 14. Needs this one, though, so a three on a heave couldn't beat you. No rebounders down there for Riggsville Perry. Second one, also good. No timeout. 52-49, got to go here. 1.3 seconds. They get it to Brown. He passes up to Little. They will not get a shot. They will not get a shot as the buzzer sounds. And the final one, this one, is a 52-49 win for Griggsville Perry over the home Cougars. 52-49. The Tornadoes improve to 11-2 and two on the season and for the second time have knocked off West Central, who falls to 14-5. and five. The six-seeded Griggsville Perry Tornadoes against the three-seed West Central Cougars. Knock them off. Griggsville Perry will move on to play Porta AC Central now in a semifinal contest on Friday night without Cole Roberts, by the way, which is a big development in that contest. We'll talk more. On the post-game show, it's presented by Illini Community Hospital, where since 1942, Illini Community Hospital has been serving the area with high-quality medical care close to home. Learn more at IlliniHospital.org. A lot to unpack in the post-game show. We want you to stay tuned on Central Illinois Sports. Illini Community Hospital is committed to providing high-quality specialty care close to home. We are pleased to welcome Dr. William Severino, urologist, and Dr. Mark Mount, ear, nose, and throat physician, to the Consulting Physician Clinic team at the Castile Center. Specialty care is also provided for orthopedics, cardiology, podiatry, obstetrics, oncology, and more. Learn more by visiting IlliniHospital.org or call 217-285-2113, extension 3950, to schedule an appointment. Few things compare to Camp Point Central's fans' dedication to the Panthers. The same can be said about Channel and the farmers they serve. You see, unlike other seed companies, they don't have salesmen. With Channel, you get the advantage of a dedicated Channel seedsman, a trusted year-round advisor who can provide the right recommendations for your fields. It's their hands-on approach that truly sets them apart. Customized service expert advice, elite seed management products. Find your Channel seedsman at Channel.com or contact local district sales manager Matt Hughes at 217-242-8852. 
If your job situation is changing because of layoffs or restructuring, you may have to make several decisions. One important decision may be what to do with your retirement plan. Make sure your retirement stays on track. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, can help. Stop by the office at 1891 Main Street in Quincy, Illinois. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. PCRE Real Estate and Auction is your number one resource for buying or selling real estate in West Central Illinois. With two office locations, one in Pike County and the other in Calhoun County, PCRE Real Estate and Auction is the place to go when you're looking to buy or sell farmland, recreational and hunting land, residential or commercial property. See our current listings at PCRERealEstate.com or call us at 217-285-5800 for PCRE Real Estate and Auction. Damon Plumbing, serving all of Pike County and the surrounding area with quality residential and commercial plumbing services. Damon Plumbing offers septic installation, drain cleaning, new water lines, remodel work for your home, or if you're planning a new build, make sure you include the Damon Boys. To get it right the first time, no job too big. Have you seen Brayden and Doug? Or too small? Sorry, Corby, couldn't resist. Call Brayden at 217-491-5415 or Doug at 217-617-2318. Damon Plumbing, recommended by our family for your family. Welcome back on the Illini Community Hospital postgame show final and an instant classic. Griggsville Perry over West Central 52-49. The Tornadoes for the second time this season beat West Central, and this time they do it on West Central's home court in the Winchester Invitational Tournament. A feat not to be sneezed at at all, and they win this one by making uh, free throws when they count it down the stretch and claim their 11th victory of the season. And this Tornado squad who feels like maybe not getting the respect they deserve, Jack, slowly turning some heads. Well, 11-2, and two, I do believe is correct on the season, is what I have. 14-5 uh, and five for West Central. Two of those five losses come the way of Grigsville Perry. You know, Grigsville Perry trailed 12-8. to eight. There were eight lead changes in the game, tied at 5-17 and 20. They were up by one, 24-23 at halftime. On a last-second layup, they trailed 32-31 after three, but win it in a game where they scored 21 points in the fourth quarter and gave up 17. That's pretty significant if you think about it. Grigsville Perry turned the ball over eight times, five in the second half, and uh, 13 on the other side, and that was four in the second half. It was uh, 18 of 45 for Grigsville Perry, 40%, 6 of 24, 28.5%, which got, you know, they were 2 of 4 in the, in the fourth quarter in threes. 12 of 19 from the free throw line after being 3 of 4 after three quarters, they make 9 out of 15, 63%. Grigsville Perry led on the night by Wyatt Lipkeman with 15. Uh, Michael Myers had 12. Michael Myers also added 9 boards on the night. Lane Lipkeman with 11. Dane McAllister with nine. Three boards, a big three for him. A huge three from Wade Lipkeman, his only points on the night. West Central, 12 of 37, 32%. Three of 13 from the arc. 20 of 29 from the free throw line. They could win it if you can make them all, but that's still 68.9%. 15 for Zach Evans after scoring five in the first half, 10 in the second. Uh, Tyson Brown had six points all in the second half. Ten points for Chance Little. He also added seven rebounds. Carson Brown off the bench with eight big points, two from Dalton Hutton, eight from Jaden Howard. He also added ten boards on the night. 52-49, the win for Grigsville Perry. The Tornadoes improve to uh, that 11-2 mark on the season. They'll play in the semifinal on Friday night against Porta, who is a very, very good squad. The two seed in this tournament for a reason, Jack, but they're going to be without their 6'4 big man and Cole Roberts, and that is a difference maker in a matchup with Grigsville Perry. Well, it is definitely, and I don't, I mean, now all of a sudden, Grigsville Perry, <laughs> I'm going to say it, they're the favored team in that game. Do you not think so? I agree. And the Camp Point Central route game, <laughs> route's a favorite, because Camp Point Central didn't play very well the other night, but Route better be ready for some intense defense tomorrow night at 8.30 because it's going to get hot and heavy in here. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be easy by any stretch for Grigsville Perry because anytime Gavin Arthelone is still on the floor, that's a pretty good squad, and he can put up points in a hurry. But the type of defense Grigsville Perry is able to play 
is going to give Port AC Central some trouble, and their big advantage was the big man, Ian Roberts. They're going to have to have big time play out of Mahoney on Friday night. Mahoney's going to have to play big. Christensen's going to really have to play big. And some of the other guards are going to have to figure out some ways to score because Gavin Arthelone is as good as any player in this tournament. There is no doubt about that. White Lipkeman's pretty darn good himself. And How about the effort by the Tornadoes here tonight? A lot of people, again, a lot of naysayers, a lot of pressure. People say maybe it was a fluke. They come out here and they're tough as nails. Well, I don't know what kind of an adjustment that Aaron Lipkeman's wife made with the two boys because it couldn't have been Aaron, but uh, – the boys did well. Wade Lipkeman with a huge three. Dalton McAllister kept his cool at the end of the game, and I think that was a difference maker too, was it not? This group's a tough one. Uh, hey, they got a shot to win this tournament. I mean, here's the thing. You're going to see two good semifinal matchups. West Central, by the way, going to drop into the fifth and sixth place bracket where they're going to take on uh, Greenfield Northwestern on Friday, and that will be the uh, 7 o'clock game on Friday. And you know they'll want to be uh, able to bounce back in that one and try to pick up the victory here on their home court. We'll have three games for you tomorrow night, two on the consolation side, first of all, as Triopia will take on Carrollton at 5.30 at 7 o'clock. It'll be the uh, Liberty Eagles who pulled the upset. They'll take on Calhoun, who played well tonight. And then at 8.30 tomorrow night, it'll be the first semifinal of the 100th Winchester Invitational Tournament. As the route Catholic Rockets look to remain uh, the number one seed and uh, only one loss on the season, we'll take on Camp Point Central, who has an upset on their mind. That's going to do it for the coverage this evening on Central Illinois Sports from the 100th Winchester Invitational Tournament. We are certainly glad you've chosen to spend your evening with us. We thank the sponsors for helping to bring the game to you tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow from the Winchester Elementary School Gymnasium. Ah, maybe, Jack, though, what do you want to do? You want to name this player of the game? Let's do that. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, proudly supports the uh, player of the game being named on Central Illinois Sports. Uh, financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, parents, teachers, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, understands this. That's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. And his name is Lipkeman, but it's not Wyatt, the leading scorer. It's Lane who kept things under control while Wyatt was trying to get loose. And I think Lane Lipkeman was the difference maker in this game. I agree, 11 points and uh, really did a lot of the ball handling, forced some key turnovers in this contest as well. He's tonight's player of the game. Now we wrap it up from the Winchester Elementary School Gymnasium. We hope you'll join us tomorrow evening for more high school basketball on Central Illinois Sports.